Welcome, I'm Carrie Geppert, a teacher librarian and a student in the Masters of Educational Technology program at Boise State University. Our assignment was to create a vlog about the pros and cons of YouTube in education. Vlogging is something new to me. Speaking to a camera can be intimidating, but sharing knowledge with each other is valuable and this is a great way to start. Like any educational tool, YouTube comes with its own set of helps or hindrances. Doesn't matter what we use in our classroom, it doesn't replace sound teaching practices and sound planning for what you want to accomplish in your delivery. Using video and teaching is one of the fastest growing ways um, and trends in education today. So it behooves us to learn how to use it effectively, to plan for those things that are seen as um, disadvantages in the tool, but it's a great way to engage our students. Let's start with some of the benefits. I think one of the most uh, first benefits is flexibility in learning. I know when I watch something on a video and I can press pause and move and try it on whatever it is I'm learning and then come back and replay and replay it again and replay it as many times as I need until I've mastered that is there's no value we can't place a value on that and that's equally true with using YouTube videos in education if we have mastery of a skill as a goal for our students think of the value of letting that student play and rewind as many times as they need to until they've learned what it is that will help them with that concept or skill. Another benefit, breadth of knowledge. There is no uh, explanation or no way to express how much knowledge is available on YouTube. It augments our instruction. It makes it inaccessible, accessible to students. It doesn't matter where they are geographically or academically you can find something that speaks to where that student is right now. Khan Academy is a great example of how video and education is used. Another benefit, accessibility. When I think of my own education experience and starting an assignment or working on a project and I had a set of written instructions might have been explained to me in the classroom might have just been handed this is your homework or this project is due at the end of next week. You get home, you start working on it, and you can't remember a step or you've forgotten how that was demonstrated. You had to wait until you could physically see the teacher again before you could move on past that stopping point. Today, with the use of video, that student can pause, rewind, replay, and keep moving forward on that project without you needing to be there. Think of what that adds to the limited classroom or direct face-to-face -to -face time you might have with a student. You now have an opportunity to explore the hard questions, to go an um, inch wide and a mile deep on a content area, because the skill or whatever needed to be learned with that video was accomplished at the student's pace and at a time separate from the classroom. Another benefit, student engagement. That YouTube video can be the hook to introduce a new content area. It can be that virtual field trip that takes the student to a place they've never been before, to a place that's only been a picture on a textbook page. The excitement, or I didn't know that was there, or that doesn't look like what I thought it was based on what I read, or that doesn't look like the picture in my textbook. Think of the conversations that can be started and learning that can be accomplished simply by comparing what's on the written page in front of us with the video we just watched. And then, when we let the students become the creator rather than the consumer, a whole other set of problem-solving skills and um, learning skills are unlocked for the student. They're motivated, they're engaged, they're inspired. They might see something and go, hey, I can do that better. Well, here you go. Here's a camera. Here's a script. You teach someone else what you've just learned. 
The last benefit I want to discuss is one that can't be overlooked. YouTube is free. In this day of limited budgets, things being cut or eliminated, YouTube is really a place that teachers can go to find high quality, good professional video to supplement their instruction. DVDs are expensive, and as a teacher librarian, they I have a, a closet full of very good DVDs that sit there just because they don't get used. And as fast as information changes, some of those are outdated within a year of purchase. YouTube fills that gap very nicely. And it's accessible almost anywhere. Teachers can upload, plan playlists, record themselves delivering a lesson, anywhere they have access to a good internet connection. And a student can watch it almost anywhere, on their phone at the local coffee shop, the public library, or maybe sharing a lesson with their parents. That is a real benefit for this educational tool. But YouTube does have a dark side. There is a lot out there and teachers need to plan for it, need to be aware for it, of it, and need to consider it as they are planning their own instructions. So one of the disadvantages for YouTube is its reliability. As much as it's an advantage, it's also a disadvantage. There is a lot of misinformation on YouTube. There's a lot of poorly done videos. Because it's an open platform, things anybody can post anything there. And we don't always know the sources, or is it a reliable source? Videos have a political agenda. Videos might have a personal agenda. It might be promoting a product. Or you might find this wonderful video and get to the very end and discover there's something that's inappropriate for use in education. Time also to sort through is another part of the reliability. Time is a precious commodity for educators and to sort and sift through everything that you need can be very daunting and some educators just are not willing to take that step. Another disadvantage, suitability. This is pretty well self-explanatory. There are things on YouTube that aren't suitable for elementary students. There are things that on YouTube that aren't suitable for secondary students. And there are things that even aren't suitable for your adult learners. Open platform. Anything and everything is available on YouTube. And being able to control it while you're wanting to use it in education needs to be carefully considered. Another disadvantage is accessibility. As much as accessibility is a benefit in YouTube, accessibility can also be a disadvantage. And by this accessibility, I mean students that have access to a reliable internet connection. Many places in rural or remote areas are unable to have a reliable internet connection. For example, I live in the state of Alaska. Our rural areas have to rely on a satellite uplink to be able to connect to the internet. That satellite uplink is broken. There's no phone, no internet, anything available in some of the remote areas. Might not be as severe or as uh, extreme as a satellite connection in other parts of the U.S. But again, when you get into remote and rural locations, their ability to access high-speed internet is limited. It's also an economic accessibility. If a family is living in poverty or in a low socioeconomic class, they may not have high-speed internet connection in their home. They have to rely on the public library or the local coffee shop Wi-Fi to be able to get to what they need. One of the other uh, disadvantages is what I call user reluctance. Sometimes teachers see YouTube as one more thing or something that's too hard to learn. I'll admit, I consider myself pretty tech savvy and willing to try new tools, and I've been reluctant to explore the uses of YouTube. Making a video is not a problem, but finding and using YouTube and planning playlists or planning a lesson that incorporates YouTube videos has been um, a challenge. 
but one that I'm willing to undertake and, and am enjoying. Getting our fellow educators to embrace the use of YouTube and just do the thing is a challenge. So where to go from here? YouTube and education is a way to connect, engage, and help our students explore the world outside of their own communities. Despite the disadvantages, the power of flexibility and accessibility and the depth of quality resources that are available can't be overlooked. They're all valid reasons to give YouTube a try in education. Video learning is an opportunity that hasn't been explored sufficiently in my opinion. So where do we start? Well, start with one thing. Pick one thing and do it really well. Pick one thing to just use. As a wise proverb says, there's only one way to eat an elephant, and that's one bite at a time. 